Well, it's a beautiful sunny January afternoon. I'm in the van and I'm heading to what I think is classed as North Lincolnshire. We're heading over to Lindome Lakes where we're going to be seeing something a little bit special. Well, this is how bonsai normally looks. However, two weeks ago, this is how it looked. With a task like this, one of the first things that you need to do is remove the fish. It was a case of getting the fish out there, netting it, getting them transferred over to another lake, and as you'd expect from a lake as old as this, there were one or two surprises. January and February are quite common months for fisheries to just run maintenance work on their lakes. Some of them use that time to restock the lakes, whereas some other fisheries, like the one that we're at today, they actually use that time to, um, to drain the ponds, to desilt them, or just to generally have some work done on them. And that is why we're here today at Lindome Lakes. The very, very well-known and popular Bonsai Lake is having a little bit of a facelift. And that's why we're, we're here today. The whole lake has been drained and it's actually been desilted as well. They've been spending quite a lot of time here redeveloping almost this lake. They're making it deeper. They're changing some of the features to it. As you can imagine, the fish have been taken out, but this lake will be taking a restocking of fish very, very shortly. So we're here to have a look what's going on and really to find out why they're actually putting in all this time and effort. I guess the question that's what everyone's really been asking Alex, why are you doing what you're doing to bonsai? Right, so as you come into the site you'll obviously see the bonsai, we've um, deeped it off and desilted it just because it was shallowing it up and um, just to make it a bit deeper we can put more fish in, make sure it's fishing well and also restructure all the islands and just give it a bit of a change, a bit of a facelift and get it back to its glory and the lake that everyone wants to be and wants to fish on when they visit Lindo. What sort of, um, if you don't mind us asking, what sort of, I mean we're talking about increasing the depth as well, what sort of depths are we going to be looking at? I think it'll be probably 8 to 10 foot when it's done, um, but we've got slopes on both sides so you've got the option to fish in whichever depth on the slope, we've got the islands where you can get in relatively shallow water with a feeder or a bomb, so there's still that option in terms of depth, but in the main body of the lake we'll have that 8 to 10 foot depth which will lend itself perfectly to shallow fishing in the summer and also it'll be a nice safe haven for the fish in the winter months so it should hopefully help improve the fishing in the winter. As an angler it's one of those things that we can't help but just to have, want to have a look at what's happening underneath the water so as I walk around the lake it was amazing to see the actual contours of some of the swims as when we're fishing there you obviously get an idea of what it's like underneath the water what the margins are like what the actual bottoms like going out into the open water but you also wonder what the shelves are like as they go up towards the island and opportunities like this don't come around very often and some of the things were really surprising The first thing that hit me was the difference in depths. You'd think that uh, a man-made water like this would be quite uniform in depth, but as you can see, looking around the lake, there were so many different fluctuations in depth. 
because the islands had been man-made you'd think that they were quite uniform as well but there were big differences in different islands as you worked your way around the lake so the differences in depth would obviously raise a few questions to you as an angler and it shows why it's so important for us to plumb depths properly as predominantly a feeder angler on this lake I couldn't help but take note of how the contours were different around the islands. Some of the islands it was really shallow where you could cast a feeder across there and you could actually be fishing in really shallow water just like where you'd want to target during the summer months. However, some of the islands there wasn't any shallow water, there were steep sh shelves, there were undercut banks everywhere and that's just natural on lakes like this that are heavily stocked over the years both through water moving, through erosion and through fish just removing silt and just the activity of huge stocks of fish being in lakes like this. The undercut banks were all around the lake. Obviously they were over there towards the islands but they were also over on the near bank which would mean that would really affect a lot of the margin fishing that anglers have been doing on this lake so far. Well, it's really taking shape now, Alex. Um, we can see a bit of a slope coming out from these pegs here. Can you just tell us roughly what the contours of these uh, this, these swims are going to be like now? Right, so as you can see behind me, we're going to have what everyone on there was the 40s and the 60s on the bonsai. Um, it's going to gradually slope down here till you probably get into around the 8 to 10 foot mark. But along this slope, you can pick any depth. It's nice and gradual, so it, say in the warmer weather, you can find two, three, four, or if it's cooling off or early spring you can find that five six foot and fishing whatever you like um, as you can see we've reshaped the islands you can see how undercut they were originally built them back up put a nice slope in as best we can that'll all settle itself out over the next few weeks as we get the water in and as you can probably hear the pump running in the background and yeah it's all starting to take shape we've got the pegs to tidy up and um, get ready for the anglers again and then we're hopefully going to get some fishing in the next few weeks. How long do you think it'll be before this lake's full now then, now that you're pumping the water in? <laughs> I reckon, pro hopefully Monday, Tuesday it'll be full. Hopefully, um, but we'll see how it goes and um, yeah, watch this space, it's all happening. Well, I love to see fisheries working and just pushing forward all the time and that's exactly what's been happening here really from day one from when this fishery opened. It's going to be great to see this lake once it's finished in a few days time. So the next time I'm going to be here is when I'm going to be actually here filming and witnessing the fish getting stocked into this lake. Some of the fish that were in here are going to be put back into this lake but the lake is also receiving a new stocking of fish as well. So. That will be the next time we are here at Lindome. So if you don't want to miss out seeing what kind of fish you're going to be put into this lake, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss the upload. I'm really looking forward to seeing all those new fish going in. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.